Well, good morning. It is November. The, uh, <laughs> I'm going ahead of myself. It is October the 25th. <laughs> and um, this is my 21st segment, actually, Bible study. And um, it's Thursday, 11 a.m. And today we're going to talk about Jesus is able to keep you, women. Jesus is able to keep you. And the purpose of this Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. Amen. So today we're going to go through as, as usual, I hope you have your Bible ready. We have a lot of scriptures that we're going to go through today because we're going to take a look at how Jesus keeps his people in the midst of every trial, every situation. And there's so many things that we go through and everybody is distressed right now about all that's going on with the politics. And even now with the bomb that's, that's being delivered to the different people and all this stuff that's going on. But Jesus is able to keep us. Amen. So our first scripture that we're going to take a look at today is Gideon in Judges chapter 6 and verse 11 through 13. It says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Josiah, the Abizite, where his son Gibeon was treasuring wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Benites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, the Lord is with you, my people. Believe that. God has not changed. He is still with us. And we remember who Gideon was. He went to war with 300 people and won because it's not the men. It was God, right? So let's keep on looking. So now I'm going to go to Isaiah. Actually, let's go to John first. Uh, John 10, 28 to 31. And this is the fact that we're being kept. He says, Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my hand. I and the father are one. Be confident, God's people. You are on the right track. No one can snatch you from God's hand. Don't be distracted by what's going on right now. Stay the course. God is able to keep you. The word encourages us. You are here in the palm of God's hand. Amen. When we go to Isaiah 65, verse 24, it says, Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Amen. This is what God says. Before they call, I will answer. While they're still speaking, I will hear. There's nothing that you are going through that God doesn't know about. Use your words. Pray. Speak to God and know that he knows. There are multiple reasons right now why people are so distracted and so frustrated they're feeling left back overlooked put out mistreated and some even feel suicidal we have never heard so many talks about suicide that we've heard this year with teenagers trying to commit suicide and teenagers committing suicide with adults committing suicide. The Bible says when you have these feelings and these things going on, to make sure that you call on me. Amen? Call on the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, call on the Lord. Psalms 91, 15 says, He will, if you, this is us, if you will call on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. That's a promise, saints. That's not just words being thrown out there. That's God being God and promising 
that he will answer. My brothers and my sisters, nothing happens to us before it gets cleared through God. No battle you are facing or going through. God has not left you alone. He is there in the midst of it. Remember that last week when we talked about God's peace, you have God's peace. Amen. And never forget that. While you are waiting for the Lord's return, we need to build ourselves up in our most holy faith and to pray in the Holy Spirit and to keep ourselves in God's love as you wait for his mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ as he brings to us eternal life. And that's a fact. We can stand on that. We can take that to the bank and that's June that's Jude 20 and 21. So God is able to preserve his people. Amen. And one day we will stand before him in his presence. We'll be preserved, fully sanctified and blameless. Colossians 1 22. So God often uses our deepest pain as the launching, the launching pad, right? Our deepest pain as a launching pod of our greatest calling. So we go through things, we get hurt, and we he uses this to push us further into him. Step out into the deep. Remember that he has not left you. So even though you have gone through pain and you're hurting, it's all right. God's got you. When trials come up, pray over it. Amen. Do not nurse it. Do not curse it. Do not rehearse it. Because God can reverse it. Amen. Know that God's got you. And that he is able to reverse any situation or use it for your good. Let's go to Psalms 50 verse 15. And he says, and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and will honor you. Think about that. The great I am says, I will honor you. He's able to do all but fail. He's the one that told the sea where to stop. Told the stars when to come out at night. Hang the clouds up in the heavens. He told Adam and Eve to name the animals in the garden. He took a rib from Adam and created man. He's the one that says he will honor you. Let's take a look at uh, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 7 to 9. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 7 to 9. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is faithful, saints. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. God is faithful. Amen. And he will keep you from falling and present you blameless. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 1, 7, 1, 12 says, That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed. Come on, saints. And I'm convinced that he is able to guard what I've entrusted to him until that day. Come on, saints. I know whom I believed. And I'm convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Are you convinced? Do you believe? Because that's where the rubber meets the road. You have to believe. We see that in James 1, 12, blessed is the one who perseveres on the trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Can I get an amen? That is the God that we serve. We have to persevere. 
Amen. Don't let the small stuff get you down. Don't get distracted with the world. Don't take your eyes off of God. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and was sinking and he had to reach out and pull him back out of the water and carry him back to the boat. Don't take your eyes off the Lord. Amen. We see in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. However, as is written, as, as however, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. We are loved by the creator. We are loved by the great I am. We are loved by the almighty. We are loved by the one that parted the Red Sea. We are loved by the one who was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. When they looked in, it was the one that looked like the son of God. They came out of that furnace and they weren't even smelling like smoke. Hallelujah. We have that love on us. We have that anointing, that spirit living in us. We are able to speak things. We need to know who we are. We are a royal priesthood. We need to recognize that we have power and authority that, that dwells within us because the Holy Spirit the third in the Trinity dwells within us. We're not weaklings. We're powerful. We're not victims. We are victorious. Amen. So believe it will be used. Whatever your, your situation and trial that you might be going through right now, believe it will be used for your good. Remember the saints that God has a plan. No devil can change his plan. No demon can change what God has already ordained. When you look at yourself in the morning, say to yourself, I am the head and not the tail. I will lend and not borrow. I know who I am. I know God is able to keep me from falling. I know he's got the the cattle, a thousand cattle on that hill. I know that I can speak to the mountain and it must obey. Have your faith built up daily. Speak to yourself and know that God hears you. Have the confidence in your spirit as to who you are. Amen. Let's go take a look at Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Lean not to your own understanding. Amen. Trust in the Lord, trusting in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust his will. The Lord is faithful and the own, and he only wants what's best for you. Trust his word within his promises. His goodness is expressed. And like any good parent, he only wants what is best for us. Not mediocre. Not halfway, but the best. Only the best is good enough for God's people. Trust his word. Trust his power. He is almighty, the creator of all things. Think about that. Everything in the earth and under the earth was created by God. Woo, Jesus. Trust his love. We are his family, his children. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and we are his prince and princesses. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Trust and believe that one day we will see God's face and be in his presence. Hallelujah. His grace is what's keeping us now. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, believe, believe God. Jesus said in Luke 18, 27, this is what Jesus replied. What is impossible with men is possible with God. Amen. What's impossible with men is possible with God. 
No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No situation you're going through now will last. God is able to keep you from falling. As I said before, whatever trial comes up, pray over it. Do not nurse it. Do not curse it or rehearse it. God can reverse it. Amen. So today we're going to take a look at the prayer list. I'm going to pray for the people on our list. And then we're going to go into prayer. Amen. On the prayer list, we've got Basil, Lydia, Melissa, Ayana, Emmett, Chrissy, Star, Georgette, Sharon, George, Romana, Galen, Weed Family, Giovanni, Shelford Family, Corey, Valerie, Ligaya, Richard O'Neill, Owens Family, Tanya, Mercer, Nick, Gilbert, Ronnie, Mercer, Kim, Loveless, Melissa, Grace Appleby, Melissa, Diane, Ron, Jeffers, Gail Mullins, Bianca Appleby, Mario French, Romario French, Pastor Teal, Leonie Walker, Kathy. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, creator of the universe, awesome, magnificent God, Father, we come right now to you, Lord God. We lift these people on the list. Oh God, we know nothing is too big or too hard or too impossible for you. We know that you are the creator of the universe. We know that you are the one that spoke and the world came into being. We lay these people at your feet, God. We lay them at your on your altar, Lord God. Do what you do best, Jehovah. Show up in their lives. Make a change, God. Do things for those who need a healing. You are a doctor who have never lost a patient. For those who need financial blessings, bless their hands, prosper them, Father God. Those who need mental breakthroughs, Lord God. Oh, Father God, you know what's going on inside of your children because we are wonderfully and awesomely made in your image. We pray right now, God, that you will go into whatever the situation is and change it in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah God we bless you right now father and thank you for what you're doing thank you for how you're responding you're you said in your word in Isaiah that before we even open our mouth to speak you hear and you're answering answer whole oh, hallelujah God all the petitions that have gone up, God, all the needs that we put before you, Father God, we ask a covering all even now, Lord God, on this country. Oh, Father God, we're coming up to an election and you know what's going on with that. Oh, Father God, you know what's going on with the politics and you know the distraction that's going on right now in the world. But we bind anything that's not of you, Father God, and we speak peace and we speak, Lord God, into the atmosphere that you'll send the angels. Angels, God, dispatch them, Father God, to remove, Lord God, anything that's contrary to your word. We thank you, Jehovah, for what you're doing even now. We thank you, Jehovah, for the, the things that the dangerous things that, that could have come upon us that you have prevented. We thank you for harm and danger that we didn't even know about that you sent and blocked. We thank you for the even this, this mercy that you're giving us today to see a new day that you woke us up to see. We are grateful to you. We thank you for all things. We take nothing for granted. We worship you right now, God, in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Bless your children, Lord God. Clean up our minds and our hearts. Get us ready for when you break that cloud and you come back for us, that we will be with you and behold you as you are. We thank you for every opportunity that we get to speak your word and to light up the atmosphere with Jesus. Jesus, at the sound of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, the atmosphere must change. Oh God, we speak life and not death into people. Give us an opportunity to speak a word, Lord God, that the world will hear before it's too late. We thank you for your love for us, and we speak right now, Lord God, that it is already done. You've already answered our petitions, and it is well. We thank you for loving us and for for hearing our petition. We bless you right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Lord God, and we say amen, amen, and amen. All right, my brothers and my sisters, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.
for being here with me on today. See you on tomorrow. Uh, I'm so, sorry. See you on next week as we go again to God's word and study his word. Amen.